Also, the rule here is that Hamza Hamza is two. There's two types of Hamza. Hamzatul Qata'i and Hamzatul Wasli. And Hamzatul Wasli is the one that joins. And Hamzatul Qata'i is if you get stabbed, if you got cut, you would say, ah, ooh, ee. That's the ha, a, the u, and the e one. Okay? So Qata'i sounds like cut, right? So there we have it right there. It's just a little something, something. So while Hamza is, so if hard is the Tajweed rule for Hamza, Alif doesn't have that rule, because Alif is a sound that's mud, that's elongation. It doesn't carry its own sound. Hamza carries its own sound. Hamza is its in and of its own self, has its own rights, which is different from Alif. Is that understandable? Okay, let's move on. I need you to come up some, please. So while Hamza... Is itself, not else, that's it, just Hamza Hamza. Loud and strong while low restraint, opening sifat. What does he do here? He explains to you all the sifat. The sifat are the exact, the, the things that you need to describe and to pronounce the letter Alif or the sound Hamza. He does it in English only because this is the introductory poem. He will not do it again because he doesn't want to give you crutches. The ulama of the past and the present agree that if you learn something in Islam, you have to learn it in what language? Arabic, Arabic is the wasila. Arabic is the via. Here, what we're doing in English is we're using English to explain Arabic terminology. We're not stepping away from the necessity to learn these things in Arabic. We're not reinventing the wheel with new English terms, which would confuse the student. It's idhar. We don't have to make it no other thing. We just explain what idhar means. I'm not going to tell somebody, I'm somebody who worships Allah, one, and I follow the way of the... I say I'm Muslim. I don't make up a new term. How do you say Muslim in English? Muslim. Muslim. You know? <laughs> or like the person, not Muslim, or whatever they're going to say. It's Muslim. Okay? So, our term is idhar. The letter is alif, not a. Okay? So, loud, it has to be loud, it has to be strong. We went over these sifat, didn't we? Yes. We went over these fat in the beginning, so we don't have to go over it now. Do you see the importance of that lesson? Yeah. That lesson preceded this one, all the sifat, so now when we talk about them, we don't, we're not talking about an abstract thing. We're talking about something that you can reflect on and you can see and know what it is, and you'll get better at reflecting and knowing on it by the time you get to the end of this poem. Inshallah. Okay? So... Loud and strong while low restrained. Low is that istifat. The, the, the tongue is down, right? Ah, everybody say ah. ah. Where's your tongue? Low. low. You understand what we're talking about now? Restrained, you're not saying ah. You're restraining it. You have some, some, some self-respect. Ah. ah. And you pull it back. Ah. ah. You don't say ah. You say ah. ah. You have to hold it, right? That's what that restraint is. Opening. What does opening mean? You open your mouth in a way that's like a doorway. You say, ah. So your, tongue, your mouth goes up and down, ah. ah. Your mandible drops and your maxilla goes up, ah. ah. And for those technical people, that's your, your upper jaw goes up and your lower jaw goes down, ah. ah. And you don't go wide, you go up, okay? Now, it says sifat. Now, here he puts that sifat at the end. What that means is that what he's just named, one, two, three, four, five, are the sifat of Alif. Do you understand that? Those are the sifat. Then he says he's describing more about the Alif. Alif is the longest poem. Why? Because Alif has the most things dealing with it. Because it's dealing not just with itself, but it's dealing with Hamza. Okay? And not only that, Aleph is one of the three letters that is the letters of the Hawa, the elongation letters. So it has a lot of different things happening with it. That's why this one is the longest. Then he goes, the Aleph comes along with Mad when following a Fet. What that means is that what I told you earlier, Aleph doesn't have its own sound. You can't put an Aleph there, it means what? No, it just means that's the beginning of the letter. You would have to put a Hamza or, or, or one of the two types of Hamzas there. The Arabs do not start on a Sukun. What did I say? The Arabs do not start on a Sukun. 
And alif by itself is nothing but a, a letter that is maskun, that has a sukun over it. Hamza is the one that takes a vowel. So alif comes along with mad. It comes as elongation. Qala. Everybody say that. Qala. So you put qala. So it's a, the fatha is on the, 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 the qaf. The alif has nothing. It's an elongation. How, albeit a normal elongation, which is miqdar, very short, at qala. As opposed to qala. You say qala. You understand that? So that's what we mean here. It comes along with mad when following a fatha. That's a fatha here. The alif only comes after a fatha. What I say? The alif only comes after a fatha. Only comes after fat I'm giving you rules that are set in stone. That simple. No one can come to you and say an alif comes after any other letter besides a fatha. Period, point blank, that's what it is. And if you learn these rules now, you, they'll think you're a genius when you get your Why? Because you recognize something. Now, you'll see Hamza after different things, but note the difference between Hamza and Alif. Alif. Okay? Be very meticulous. Be very meticulous. Do not be like those people who cannot think, who cannot become critical thinkers. And their knowledge does them no benefit because all they want to do is look around and see who else is saying the same thing and they say the same thing. No, you think, you use your knowledge. And your knowledge is that thing will make you understand and determine when something is praiseworthy and when something is depraiseworthy. Okay? So it's not here that we're just trying to learn things in an abstract form. We're trying to learn them to utilize them. We together? Alif only comes after a fatha period. Or... It shows up at the ends of words, right before they crash. Let me develop a principle here. The principle here is when I give you a rule, that's the rule. Then afterwards, you memorize the exceptions. Okay? You understand that? So that is the rule. The rule is that Alif comes after mud. The exception are two. The exceptions are two. Or shows up at the ends of words right before they crash. Everybody say, Amenu. Now think in your mind, Amenu. After that, wow, there's an alif. Qalu. Let me write it out for you. See, this right here, Qalu. You see the alif at the end? Focus here, please. Qalu. This alif, and it usually has a little five over it. This is called the Alif al fariqa What did I say? Alif At this time, you don't really need to memorize that. But it's the Alif that separates and demarcates to help the reader pass. It's the Alif that lets you know. A lot of times the beginners are saying, how do I know it's the end of the word? They, I hear this question millions of times. Maybe. I'm, I'm exaggerating millions. But I, I've heard this letter for at least 20 years. Same question. How do I know the word is ended? This alif here separates and demarcates to help the reader pass. The other exception for that is when you say bin. Okay? Bin, and then you have an alif in between them. Like bin ladina. Okay? So that's the only exceptions to that rule that I gave you. All right? So now you know the rule, and now you know the exceptions. Walk with it and utilize it. Okay? Walk with it, rule it. Now go up a little bit. I'm going to make sure of something, please. Just one space. Okay, so here it says right before they crash, right before the words crash into each other, it separates and demarcates to help the reader pass, while Hamza, as it seems to need a tad more of a shutter. Now here we're going to talk about Hamza. Hamza is different from Alif. It is not Alif. Hamza is different from Alif. It, while Hamza, as it seems to need, a tad more of a sharh, sharh means explanation. It rides upon the Alif. Hamza, it rides upon the Alif. The wow and even ya. Yeah. So when you see a Hamza, it's riding on the Alif. Or it's under the Alif. And he didn't mean by this that it rides upon the Alif on the wow and even ya yeah, to say that's it. 